Jensen of the International Secret Police. Marsha Winfield, rescued from a hut at Lake Tengrinor by Speed and Clint, has recovered from the effects of the vapors of sleep. She tells the boys all she can remember concerning her kidnapping and imprisonment at the lake, while Splinters, the renegade aviator, tells of the octopus slave traffic and of his base of operations at the foot of the Himalayas. Now, Speed, Clint, and Barney have the positive proof they needed to arrest the octopus. But they must first make sure that he cannot send for his fleet of fighting planes stationed at Black Pass. We find them fast approaching Nagchuka with Marsha, her brother Larry, who is still unconscious, and Chief Tipo. Well, nobody's tried to stop us yet and take Miss Marsha and her brother away from us, Clint. Yeah, we've moved too fast for the octopus this time, Speed. When he discovered that we had Marsha with us yet, he lost his head completely. Why, he almost gave himself away in his anxiety to see her and perhaps silence her forever. Even the very mention of that criminal frightens me. Don't blame your bet, Marsha, but you needn't worry. He can't touch her now. Not with us around. Is the second car still following us, Mr. Barlow? Mm, yes, Chief Depot. <laughs> the Tibetans that see us pass stop and stare. I, I imagine they haven't seen two automobiles at a time go along this road. Especially now with such important people in them. Ain't every day a Tibetan can take a squint at the secret police. I nope. <laughs> <laughs> wonder what Splinters is thinking, riding back there with those other two octopus gangsters. I bet he wishes he was in our car. Would they harm him for telling you what he knows? They'd like to, I guess, Miss Marcia. But they can't hurt him. Not with Chief Tipo's men in the car with him. What are you so quiet about, Clint? You've been thinking about something ever since we left Mr. Searing's house. And I'm thinking about those planes at Black Pass, Barney. The octopus knows we may learn a lot from Marcia and Splinters now, so I imagine he's already ordered them to stand ready for a takeoff. And then they'll attack anybody who bothers the octopus, huh? Absolutely. And it won't be any halfway measures either. With the modern fighting equipment he has, the octopus could gain control of Tibet by striking now. And if he did this, he would be a serious threat to the peace of the world. Does he actually dare think that he might someday rule the entire world, Mr. Barlow? Yes, I believe so, Chief Tipo. The octopus has a brilliant brain. It's a little too brilliant. From what he has done in the past, I think he's crossed the borderline between sanity and insanity. You mean he's cracked? I'm sure of it. That'd explain a lot of things. I don't think anybody, no matter how much of a criminal he was, would even try to do the things the octopus has, unless he was kind of off his base. Ah, uh, there is Nike Chuka just ahead, Miss Winfield. Soon we shall be with your friends, and your brother shall have the correct medical care. Oh, I'm so glad, Chief Tipo. Poor Larry. He's all right, Miss Marcia. Barney and I have got him propped up between us. He's plenty comfortable. Can you send some of your men to Black Pass right away, Chief Tipo? I'll feel a lot happier when I know them octopus flyers are grounded by red tape. Uh, I shall send my men there as soon as I reach my office, Mr. Dunlap. In fact, if you do not need me for the next 24 hours, I may go with them to Black Pass. We must be certain that those aviators do not take off. Say, that's a swell idea. What do you think, Clint? That sounds good to me. Knowing the danger as he does, Chief Tipo will allow nothing to escape his notice. And that's important. The smallest thing might wreck our plans now, even though we're holding the right weapons in our hands at last. I'll say so. Look, we're in Nagchuka. How do you like it, Miss Marcia? It's so quaint, isn't it, Steve? I'll say. Quaint but severe, Marcia. Nobody can pass through Nagchuka without being questioned as to who they are and what their business is in Lhasa or any place else in Tibet. Of course, they're more careful of who goes into Lhasa because it's their holy city. Dawa was telling me all about it. Dawa is very interesting, isn't he? Yeah. I wish he could have come with us to Nagchuka. I wanted him to meet Jean. But we had too much business to finish to bother with meetings. You said it. 
All I'm interested in meeting now is the octopus. Well, say, isn't that the hotel where Dr. Kingsley and the others are staying, Chief Depot? Ah, yes, Mr. Barlow. I shall leave you all there and then continue to my office. I must take care of our prisoners and make arrangements for the journey to Black Pass, as well as make a report to my superiors concerning what we have learned. Will you get us that warrant for the arrest of the octopus at the same time? I certainly will. Good. We'll hold it until we hear from you that all is safe at Black Pass. And then we'll go after our enemy at the Pass of the Iron Dagger. Life is just one pass after another in Tibet. <laughs> and people making passes at you, Barney. This ain't no time to make jokes, kid. Look, here we are at the hotel now. Instead of joking, help us with Larry Winfield. Sure I will. Uh, are you going to your office now, Chief Tipo? Uh, yes, I shall come back here as soon as possible for last-minute orders, Mr. Barlow. Good. And now, Marsha, in a few minutes you'll be safe with Dr. Kingsley and Jean again. After all this time, safe at last. OC4 calling the Black Pass. OC4 calling the Black Pass. Standing by. Come in. Black Pass. Replying to OC4. Black Pass. Standing by for two-way conversation. Is this Chen? Yes, Octopus. You fool! You're not no better than to mention my name over the air like that. I am sorry, Master. But since we are using this ultra shortwave set you have perfected, I thought it impossible for anyone else to be able to listen to us. The secret police are able to do anything, Chen. However, I do not think they are listening at this moment. I have called you as my chief pilot to prepare to leave Black Pass as soon as I give you the word. Leave the pass? I shall be most happy to do that. It is becoming colder and colder here. <laughs> you will find it warm enough where you will be going. What do you mean, Master? I want you to prepare the planes for attack. Mount all the machine guns, give the pilots plenty of ammunition, and get ready to for open war. War? On the secret police? On the secret police and all of Tibet, if necessary. They are not prepared for attack. They believe in peace in this country. <laughs> that is good. Good for me. They shall be easily conquered. But what has brought all this about? I knew that you would summon us to you, but I did not know we would attack Tibet. I did not know that either, at least that the attack would come at this time. But it is necessary. Clint Barlow rescued the Winfields from Lake Tengreno and took Splinters and the other two guards prisoners. By my honored ancestors, then we are lost. The prisoners will tell off everything. Concerning your activity. We are not lost because of you and the others at Black Pass, Chan. But now you understand why you must get the men and the planes ready for action. I do, Master. I go. Give me 24 hours and we shall be ready for any deeds that you wish. Good. <laughs> I knew I could depend on you, Chan. The foolish secret police think that they have beaten me because they have a few witnesses. <laughs> but they forget my army of planes. It will be a pleasure to reawaken their memories with machine gun bullets. But meantime, I have another little surprise for them. Oh, Marsha. Marsha, I'm so glad to see you again. I'm so glad. There, there, Jean, honey. <laughs> Don't cry. Oh, I can't understand girls. They cry when they're unhappy, and then they cry when they ought to be happy, too. That just did, Speed. I'm so happy. I'm crying. Beats me. And when you get as old as me, Speed, you'll know even less about women than you do now. <laughs> I wonder what Dr. Kingsley is learning about Larry's condition. Uh, now, don't you worry, Marsha. Larry's going to be all right. Between the doc and Clint, they'll find out what's wrong with him in no time. Yeah, they've been in the other room with him a long time. Ought to be coming out pretty soon. It was so thrilling to see Marsha's brother. I've heard so much about him. He always seemed sort of like Prince Charming to me. As thin and sick looking as he is, Jean? Do you really think he looks like Prince Charming? Yes, I do, Barney. If you were a prince and were held captive by an ogre, you'd be thin too, wouldn't you? Well, you've got something there, Jean. Guess I would at that. What do you mean, ogre? Why, the octopus, of course. There you go again, still talking in riddles. Why don't you call things by their right names? Oh, I try to, Speed. So it's a miracle that he came through his experience alive, Glenn. Well, I can readily understand that, Dr. Kingsley. Oh, Doctor, how is Larry? Well, he's suffering mostly from malnutrition. 
They almost starved him to death, Marsha. Rest, care, and plenty of good nourishing food will fix him up in no time. Oh, thank heaven. Then he's not unconscious from the vapors of sleep, huh? Yes, they affect him so strongly, Speed, because he's so weak. It's fortunate for Marsha that Splinters had a chivalrous streak in his nature. She was fed a little better. If I'd known that Larry wasn't getting enough... Oh, you would have given him your food, eh? Then Speed and Clint would never have brought you back alive from Tengrenor, Marsha. No, and as long as it all came out in the wash, we ought to be glad. Too bad Bob Gilmore isn't here to be on the welcoming committee, too. He went out just about half an hour before you came, Barney. Was going to the police office, he said, to see if they'd heard anything more from you. Well, he'll probably see Chief Tipper there and learn that we're here. Say, that reminds me. Chief ought to be getting here pretty soon, shouldn't ah, he? Ah, no, wait a minute. Hold on, Speed. Don't be so impatient. The chief has a lot to accomplish in a short time, you know. I'm so anxious to learn the details of all that's happened since we last saw you, Speed. But I think I better look after Marsha now. Her strength is about gone. Yeah, she's been swell, Dr. Kingsley. She was real weak and scared when she came to, but she told us all she knew about the octopus. Well, uh, the reaction must be setting in now. I'll depend on you, Doctor, to take care of Marsha and Larry. You need have no fear in that respect, Clint. Come, Marsha. I'll take you to your room. And, uh, Jean, you come along. You'll be able to help Marsha a lot. All right, Daddy. You won't go while I'm helping Marsha, will you, see? No, Jean. We'll wait. Goodbye for now, then. And thank you from the bottom of my heart. Don't thank us, Marsha. Rescuing people like you isn't work. It's a pleasure. <laughs> well, goodbye. Yeah, goodbye. Goodbye. We'll see you later, then. <sighs> well, that's that, Clint. It's a big relief to have Miss Marsh and Larry safe, isn't it? Yes, Speed. Now we have nothing to think about but the capture of the octopus. And we'll go after him as soon as Chief Tipo gives us the word that all's quiet at Black Pass? Yes. Meanwhile, we'd better go back to Mr. Searing's home. We can keep a careful watch on the pass of the Iron Dagger from there. Yeah. Before we go, maybe Larry Winfield will come too enough to talk. Or maybe Splinters can tell us some more. Mr. Barlow! Mr. Barlow! Suffering wangdoodles. Who's trying to break down the door? I'll see who it is. Chief Tipo! Mr. Barlow! Mr. Barlow! Splinter and the two other guards! What? What about Splinters? A band of men rushed us just as we were about to go into my office. And Splinters and the others were shot. Shot? You mean... He means that Splinters will never talk again. (laughs) 